Welcome back. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you guys the proper method for wire-to-wire -wire soldering without damaging the wire and without wasting your time. So I've got a couple different examples here. I've got some larger gauge, which is usually a bigger pain, and some thinner gauge, which is usually way easier. Uh, the thicker gauge will sink too much heat away from the soldering iron and it will create some complications about getting a good bead of solder on there for the bonding. And the thinner wire, you have to worry about it sinking too much heat and actually with some of the uh, insulation, it will, it will uh, melt it back and destroy part of your wire. Or sometimes it'll even oxidize your wire if you're using thin copper. So anyway, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm gonna start out with the uh, thin gauge. Uh, I think this is probably, what, 24, 28 gauge wire. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my pan of ice. Okay. Get a little bit of flux in there, a little bit of flux on here. Most important part of this whole technique is that you prep your wires. I couldn't say that enough. All wires need to be prepped, which means they have to be stripped far enough back and you have to have a bead of solder on there in order for the wire to uh, bond quickly and easily. So I'm going to go ahead and prep this wire. Let's go ahead and see if we can zoom in on that. Okay, here we go. So this wire here, I hope that can come into frame. It's a tiny, tiny wire, but I'm going to put a bead of solder on there. I dipped it in the flux just to give it a good head start because sometimes the older wires are oxidized and it makes really pain for the, uh, for the solder to stick to it. So I keep my solder and iron parallel with the wire and actually it gives me a bigger surface contact so it conducts heat quicker. And I feed the solder into it and then slowly pull the iron away and it leaves that bead of solder on there. You can see it. That's what you want. You want a ball of solder sitting on the end. So it's completely tinned and then there's a ball of solder right there. So that's that wire. Now let's prep the second wire. Go. Same thing. Clean the tip of the soldering iron. Should be nice and shiny. Put the soldering iron parallel to the wire and feed the solder into it. Tin the whole wire and then slowly pull the soldering iron away and it'll leave a bead right on the wire. Okay, clean the tip again. Now, to bond the two wires together, I'm going to uh, First cut off a piece of heat shrink. So heat shrink is absolutely essential. This is dual layer heat shrink so it will melt and a little bit of glue will come out on both sides and it will uh, help protect the, the bond that I'm creating and keep it watertight. So I usually go a little bit longer on the heat shrink, uh, a little bit longer than uh, the strip back portion itself. So this one here is about an inch and a half get the other piece of wire that's also got a bead of solder. You're going to place it parallel to the first wire and I run the soldering iron right down the tip and then drag it back and forth really quickly and hold it. Sometimes you just give it a good blow to cool the solder quickly and you have a perfect bond between the two wires. No cold solder joints there. So then you put the heat shrink over it. Use the hot air station to shrink it. Make sure you get it from all sides. There it goes. So I got a little bit of glue coming out over here. And I work the hot air station towards the other side. The glue's coming out over there and done. And that is gonna be watertight and actually pretty rigid when it's done. So that's a single wire, uh, thin gauge. Let's see if I can do a thicker gauge. Okay, this one here is gonna use quite a bit more solder. And again, prep 
is absolutely essential. So I got nice clean copper here. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on there. Same thing, I'm going to feed the solder in sideways while keeping as much of my soldering iron on on the copper as possible. You want to keep it nice and hot. And as it gets hot, you'll see that the solder will bleed into the bundle. You got to watch it because since there's so much copper in this wire, it's going to get hot, real hot. It's going to burn my hand. Okay, there you can see it's almost completely silver. So now is the next trick. You got to add a bead of solder to it so that they bundle together. Uh, so now that it's completely bled in, I'm going to feed a surplus amount. Slowly pull the soldering iron away. You can see that there is excess solder on that wire. So you got to watch it. It's very hot. Wire number two. Wire number two. Let's get a little bit of flux on there. Clean, clean. See, a lot of guys make the mistake of pulling the soldering iron away, and then that copper cools off really quickly. There we go. Quite a bit in there. There we are. Okay, so now I've got my wires together. This, I'm going to go ahead and use my my second pan of ice because this is going to get a little bit complex. Okay, I have other jigs that I use for doing wire to wire soldering, and uh, maybe I'll do those in another video sometime. Just jigs make the life so much easier, man. So the trick here is to get them next to each other, just like that. And then instead of using the solder to blend them both together, you're going to have to add extra to it. So that's what I did. They're both together. I'm going to feed a ball of solder down in there. Let's do it again. There we go. Once those wires heat up, this will bond them both together. There you go. And since there's more thermal mass there, you have to remember that the solder is going to stay liquid a little bit longer. So it takes longer for the solder to turn to liquid. At the same time, when you're done, you pull your iron away. There's more thermal mass, so it will actually stay liquid longer, which is going to be a big pain if you dip the wires or anything. You'll get a solder ball that splashes up at your face. That two wires bonded together of a heavier gauge and let's see yeah you guys probably called it I forgot my uh, my shrink tube before I did the bond that's all right Always start at one side with the shrink tube and then I'll walk the shrink towards the other side. That way there I know exactly where the shrink tube is going to seal because you don't want it moving on you and that way there you know you only have a quarter of an inch on one side and three inches on the other. So here we go at 300 degrees you can see this air station takes no time at all. There you have it. Two wires bonded together. Got glue coming out at both sides. It's a good tight bond. No cold solder joints there. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to put on video. Thanks.